Hey everybody, welcome back to Info 3370, studying social inequality with data science. We're continuing our brief introduction to machine learning by considering nonlinear smooth functions as estimated with the MGCV package for R. MGCV is a package that made these methods really accessible and easy to apply. If you're interested in them, I would point you to Simon Wood's website, which includes slides and other resources about how to use the package. And he also has a book that introduces these methods uh, with examples using R. There are a lot of mathematical details that you could get into with GAMS. We're going to focus today on just the very most basic ideas about how to use them in R, which are actually not all that complicated. Let's begin by setting up our environment. So I've already set my working directory to the location where the data are stored. I'm going to load the tidyverse, as we always do to have the functions that we use regularly in class. We're also going to load the MGCV package. And then we're going to load the data in the learning set and the holdout set. And if you are jumping in on this video partway through, look back at our earlier classes where we talked about where you can get access to these data through the PSID. OK, so the big idea here is that we might start with a linear model. A linear model like OLS is a special case of generalized linear models. So let's create a fit, which is going to be a generalized linear model where we're going to model here the respondent's log annual income, G3 log income, as a function of their parent's income when that respondent was a child. So G2 log income is the predictor. And we're going to look for those variables within the data set learning. So let's go ahead and fit that model. Then we might want to visualize that fit that we've created. So we're going to start with the learning data. I'm going to now mutate to create a new variable with the predicted values. So we'll pipe the learning data down into a mutate function. Create y hat is going to store our predicted values. And we're going to have the predicted values from that fitted model object. Then we can pipe that on down into a ggplot call, where we're going to put the predictor, g2 log income, on the x-axis x equals g2 log income, and we're going to have y equals y hat. And maybe we'll visualize this with a line. So you can see what's gone on in this model. We have a predictor, parent's log income, and an outcome, uh, the predicted value of the kid's log income. And the relationship between these two is a line, because that was the assumption of the linear model we fit. GAMs enter the picture when we don't want to believe this assumption, that the relationship between a numeric predictor and an outcome is necessarily linear. Perhaps it has a smooth relationship, but maybe it's more steep at the beginning and flatter at the end, or flatter at the beginning and steeper at the end. There are many substantively interesting questions we can ask about relationships that may not necessarily follow a line. Doing this is really quite easy. So we're going to take our call to GLM for a linear model and replace that with a call to GAM for an additive model. And as always, you can look at the help file for GAM to see information about how to use this function. The key way to use the function is that when we have a continuous predictor, like the parent's log income, and we want to estimate that with a smooth relationship with the outcome instead of a linear relationship, we can wrap it in this s function. And as with the gam function, you can look at the help for the s, which defines smooths in the gam formula. A smooth is going to be a spline, which is a linear basis expansion of that variable across many columns of a model matrix. That's a lot of jargon, but it just means that the model is going to be able to model this in a nonlinear way that is still smooth. So nearby points are going to have similar predicted values, and we're going to be able to draw a line that looks pretty smooth across those points. So we can go ahead and make that fit and visualize it just as we did with the linear model. We see that it is now no longer a line. It looks here like the predicted value drops and then comes up and has a couple bumps and goes up toward the top. Of course, there are open questions about whether these wiggles are real. GAM is designed to penalize wiggliness. Um, in this case, it's with thin plate splines as the default. And so it's going to try to find something that is a smooth fit that allows wiggliness when the data supports it, but penalizes wiggliness when the data don't support the wiggliness so much. You could always evaluate it yourself with a train test split. You could even compare and have a GAM fit and a linear model fit and see which one generalizes better out of sample to new cases. GAMs don't stop at bi bivariate relationships. Um, we could actually add other predictors to this model also, just as we could in a generalized linear model. 
So perhaps we want to add to this a term for the respondent's education, for example. We could then fit that model. And here I'm going to add color here to indicate the respondent's education. We're now looking at the predicted value of the respondent's income at various values of their parents' income when they were a child uh, within each subgroup defined by the respondent's education. So incomes are highest for the respondents who finished college and lowest for respondents who had less than a high school degree. What you'll notice in this figure is that these curves are all parallel to one another. That's what we mean when we say that this is a generalized additive model. It has one term for the respondent's education and another additive term for this smooth component as a function of the parent's log income. You can modify your generalized additive model to include interactions, just as you would in a generalized linear model. Here we do that by adding to this s function a term for by, where we're going to say that we want to do this by a factor version of the respondent's education. And we can fit that model and then look at what we have. And now what we have is a smooth function estimated within each subgroup defined by the respondent's education. As with GLMs, you might, as you do this, worry a bit about overfitting. After all, there's an increasing number of parameters here, and it's going to discover wiggles within these little tiny subgroups that might be real or they might be idiosyncrasies in the training set. And so as before, it's always important to consider a train test split to evaluate how well your model predicts out of sample. We're going to stop there for today. I'd like to conclude by saying that GAMS are an excellent resource that extends your toolkit from generalized linear models and can allow you to discover substantively interesting and meaningful uh, patterns in data where the pattern between a numeric predictor and an outcome might be smooth, but perhaps nonlinear, and we'd like a method that's able to estimate those associations.